Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is LaShawn and this is Lush Uncut. I was scrolling on Instagram this morning when I came across this post that was shared by The Shade Room. If you don't know what The Shade Room is, it's basically this media outlet that primarily focuses on black pop culture. So this is what they shared. It is something that was posted on X by Simone Biles. The original post said, Simone Biles being the GOAT, winning gold medals, and dominating gymnastics is her black job. She reposted that and said, I love my black job. Before I continue, I want to say I do not have a problem with Simone Biles whatsoever. She is a fantastic athlete and she is very good at what she does, obviously. However, I am a little annoyed that she posted something that can be interpreted as partisan. The conversation around this whole black jobs term started when Donald Trump said in his debate against Joe Biden that migrants who were illegally crossing across the border were taking quote unquote black jobs. And because it was something that could be mildly interpreted as racist, the internet, the Democrat media, Everybody on Instagram took it and ran with it because, of course, it came out of the mouth of Donald Trump. Now, this conversation around this term has been going on for quite some time. It will die down and it will come back out, come back up. I'm sorry. And every single time I see it come back up, it irritates me. And I've been trying to figure out why it irritates me because for the most part, when I see little petty things like this on social media, I tend to just ignore it because I'm just like, whatever. People are honestly just stupid at this point. Um, and I just cannot be baited into getting upset about every single thing that I think is dumb that is shared online. But every time I see this, I get irritated and I've been trying to figure out why. And I realized it's because the real issue is that black people are worried about the wrong thing. Trump using the term black job should be the last one on anyone's priority list. Black people, black America, the black community has things that they should be concerned about way more than that. Take, for example, this story out of Jackson, Mississippi. Well, Jackson, the city council members are calling for the Texaco gas station on Mega Everett Boulevard to be closed. Ward 4 Councilman Brian Grizel says that residents in his ward have been calling him expressing their concerns about the gas station. Last Saturday, a man was shot and killed there. The gas station is in Ward 3 under Councilman Kenneth Stokes, who has been calling for the gas station to be closed prior to last Saturday's shooting. Councilman Grizel says that he has started to the process to declare the gas station a public nuisance and have it shut down. You know, that uh, store kind of anchors both wards 4 and 3, and uh, it's very close to where I live. And a lot of nights I hear the gunshots. Uh, when I pull out to go to work in the morning, I see the blight. Um, and even with it being one of the newest areas, one of the newest buildings in the area, and with us investing so much money into that mega Evers corridor, things have got to change. Um, the store owners, and I understand that, you know, you may have Texaco brand for gas, but the the actual store owners have not shown any interest in cleaning up that area and they have to be dealt with. Brazil says that the process starts with collecting the history of code violations and violent crimes. He hopes with enough evidence the council can declare the gas station a safety hazard. So you got that right. There's a gas station somewhere in Jackson, Mississippi, and apparently it has become a hub for a violent crime. And instead of solving the crime problem, the elected officials of that community has decided to close down the gas station, thus taking away black jobs. <laughs> I don't know if the people working in that gas station are black, but I'm pretty sure at least one of them are. So they're taking away black jobs and another business from a black community. When I saw this story, I actually couldn't believe it. I'm like, there's no way that their solution to this is to shut down the gas station. And black people love to cry online about having food deserts and not having thriving businesses in a community. But when the stories like this um, happen, nobody cares. Nobody makes a connection between the crime and the impact that the crime has on businesses. Now, here are some additional facts about Jackson. Jackson, Mississippi has a population that is 82% black. 
In 2023, Jackson led the nation in killings per capita with 118 reported homicide. The overall crime rate in Jackson is double the national average. And this is not just in Jackson, Mississippi. In the top 10 most dangerous cities in America, 8 out of 10 of them have a black population of over 60%. And ironically, they are all run by Democrats. So what's my point here? Black America has much bigger fish to fry. And that is exactly why every single time I see black people online get angry about something that Donald Trump said or something that some Republican said or something that some white person did or a Karen did or, you know, this very pointless, petty story. Every time they get us upset about it, I think about the crime rates in black communities. I think about the, um, the single motherhood rate in black communities. And I'm like, what? Y'all are mad about the wrong things. And the fact of the matter is the government is not the solution to black America's problem. Black America has a really, really bad cultural and community problem. And it doesn't matter, quite frankly, who is in the White House, whether it's Trump or Harris, that is not going to solve the roots of the problem of black America. The only difference is, in my opinion, the Harris administration would take advantage of those problems and encourage those problems via some of her policies. Because again, most of these cities are primarily run by Democrats. So it seems as if they don't have a problem with the high crime rate in these communities. The fact of the matter is, the Democrat plantation is alive and thriving. And what I mean by Democrat plantation, because I was thinking about this the other day, is when slavery was happening, right? The slaves would work for the slave masters, obviously, and then they would be clothed and fed and housed by the masters, right? Fast forward to today. Black Americans are so loyal to Democrats so loyal when it comes to voting, when it comes to defending, when it comes to praising, when it comes to exalting, the loyalty is just, and in return, the Democrats are like, you know what? I'm going to pay for your housing. I'm going to pay for your food. I'm going to make sure that you're taken care of as long as you guarantee that you're going to vote for me and don't vote for those Republicans because they're going to take away your Medicaid. They're going to take away all your, your child benefits. They're going to take away all of these things that the government is giving to you because the Democrats would prefer for black Americans and not just black Americans, for all Americans to be dependent on the government because then they can control the way you vote. Because once you have, you know, someone feeding you and putting a roof over your head, you need them. So you need them to stay in power. And I think that is exactly why this whole conversation around this black job and any conversation around these very just stupid issues that I see online really irritates me because honestly speaking, it's actually sad because you think about what African-Americans have been through in this country. When you think about how they came here, what they've been able to overcome, what they've been able to build, what they've been able to do. And you look at their descendants and you look at these cities and you look at the crime rates and you look at the family, you look at the community. It's so sad and it's infuriating. Because when you try to talk about this, like, oh, you're defending Trump, you're defending Republicans. <sighs> but you are defending a party that depends on your poverty, that depends on your ignorance, that depends on the breakdown of your family, that depends on you being able to kill your child in your womb. That's the party that you are defending.